Hey guys and welcome to the Fat Boss Guide to Lady Jaina Proudmoore. So this final boss is an epic encounter, but surprisingly for a last boss, it isn't actually too difficult, especially during phase one and two. However, the final phase, if you do it incorrectly, can cause you to wipe very quickly as you just sit in a frozen tomb, contemplating what you're doing with your life. Anyway, let's jump in with the start of the fight. So the start of the fight takes place on a ship with Jaina and a couple of marine ads. The marine ads will place down charges that will explode after so long, dealing damage to everyone on the entire ship. You can pick up the charges and throw them overboard using your extra action button. Aside from that, they'll fixate random players and melee hit them, but all forms of CC work and providing that DPS swap to them quickly as they spawn throughout the phase, you should be able to kill them well before they reach anyone. Now throughout the phase, Alliance ships will pull alongside your one and bombard the raid, causing multiple zones to spawn underneath players. Shortly afterwards, these zones will be hit and cause you to take a burst of damage and be knocked back if you're stood within them. Afterwards, fire is left behind. You can fight the ships off by using the siege vehicles on your own. Each shot has roughly a 10 second recharge and you'll need to hit the attacking ship 6 times on heroic and 3 times on normal. As you have 3 vehicles, if you're quick you can fight them off within 12 seconds or so. We assign a player to each vehicle so that the attacking ship is shot immediately. Now the fires from the bombard however can set the vehicles alight preventing you from using them. Fortunately Jaina helps you out here as throughout the fight she'll cast Avalanche. This will debuff one tank and two other random players. On normal mode this only debuffs the tank. Over the duration of the debuffs comets will fire down and land at your locations dealing massive damage if you're hit by them. These comets do fortunately clear the fire. So the moment the debuffs come out run over fire to remove it whilst keeping clear of other debuff players to prevent you from accidentally killing each other. Do not however clear the entire ship, you ideally want at least one patch of fire remaining. This is because Jaina applies chilling touch to players when they're hit by some of her abilities. This dot slows your movement speed and can stack. If you ever reach 20 stacks and drop below 80% health, you'll be placed in an ice block, unable to move or use spells until the raid has killed your ice block off, which has a fair amount of health so it can take a while. Standing in the fire however will completely remove all of your stacks, and this is most important for tanks. Jaina doesn't actually melee hit and instead she'll spam cast Ice Shard. This deals a burst of physical damage and applies a stacking debuff that increases the damage you take from this ability by 10%. As you guessed, this also applies chilling touch stacks. So you want to tank swap around 10 to 12 stacks of the Ice Shard and run into any fire to reset your chilling touch stacks whenever you can. Now these fires are also useful for when the boss casts Ring of Ice. At 100% energy, she'll cast this ability, creating a large zone of ice around her. At the end of the cast, anyone within the circle will take a large burst of damage and be frozen for 30 seconds. Everyone outside of the circle takes far less damage and is just rooted instead. So the moment this cast begins, you want everyone to move from the circle and stand in a fire patch. This will instantly remove the roots. Speaking of roots, Jaina will also randomly root people throughout this phase when she casts Grasp of Frost. This is unavoidable and instead of relying on fires, you should just have healers quickly dispel the effect, especially if a ring of ice is due as you do not want melee rooted within a circle cast, unable to escape it. Now one of the last things to mention in this phase is her freezing blast. This ability is cast towards the tank and at the end of the cast she'll fire off a large narrow cone of ice. This deals a big burst of damage and knocks you back a fair distance. Tanks you just want to face the boss away from the raid at all times and if for whatever reason it does end up going towards the raid, make sure that you move out of it because if you are knocked back off the ship you will just die. Now last to note is that 80% health she will cast time warp. This causes her just to cast her ability faster and more frequently. This doesn't really have any real effect on the phase really, just be ready to move out of the ring of ice quicker as the cast time will be 30% faster. Now once you get up to 60% health, the first intermission will begin. Jaina will teleport into the ocean, give you some RP, and then will freeze the ship and the surrounding location. You've got to jump off the ship and go and find her, and interrupt her howling winds cast to begin phase 2. As you run towards her, your vision is limited and you have to dodge tornadoes that knock you back and deal huge damage. These tornadoes move back and forth and as a result are pretty easy to predict. Jaina will also be sending out glacial shards. If you're hit by one of these, you're instantly frozen in an ice block, which isn't ideal whatsoever as you can potentially be frozen outside the next encounter space. We have rogues run ahead with Cloak of Shadows up and interrupt her immediately, but ultimately, you do have a lot of time here, there is no reason to rush, just make sure you avoid everything and get to her and interrupt her. Now before we dive into this phase, let us explain the core mechanics here. So chilling touch stacks in this phase will be applied to everyone in the raid every 6 seconds or so. The only way to reset them during this phase is using the 3 unexploded ordnance barrels. These barrels always spawn in the exact same locations and can only be used once each. The barrels are buffed with refractive ice, which causes them to take 99% less damage, which is a problem because you have to destroy them to gain the warmth from them to reset your chilling touch stacks. 
However, right from the start of the phase, Jaina helps you. She will debuff three players in your raid with Broadside. When this debuff expires, a large targeting zone will appear under your feet and explode a couple of seconds afterwards, dealing massive damage to anyone hit, but also removing refractive ice from any of the barrels hit. So the moment this debuff comes in, you'll want one of the players to stand on top of the barrel to make it vulnerable to damage once it's hit. Once the barrel is destroyed, it remains briefly casting Burning Explosion. This new targeting circle gives you the warmth buff, resetting and completely preventing you from gaining chilled stacks. However, at the end of the cast, the barrel will explode, dealing damage to anyone within its targeting circle, so at the latest point, just before the explosion, you'll want to move out the barrel. Once we've used the first barrel on the left side of the room, we then move to the next clockwise around the room. Use broadside debuffs to make them vulnerable, and then kill them off whenever the raid is on around 12 stacks or so. Do that throughout this entire phase and you will transition the boss well before you run out of barrels and hit 20 stacks. Just be careful with cleave, as you don't want to accidentally kill off a barrel early. But, of course, there are other mechanics in play. For tanks, you're still going to get hit by the Ice Shard cast, but as there is limited heat sources now, you're not going to be able to reset every single time. So you'll want to just tank Jaina and only tank swap the moment one of you is frozen. DPS then must immediately swap to the Ice Block tank just to free them up. If they are too slow, however, and both tanks become frozen, Jaina will then begin to start hitting random players in your raid, which is obviously very bad. Avalanche is still in play during this phase, however, it only affects the tank. It works the exact same way, however you leave patches of frost behind you. These patches apply chill touch stacks very quickly, so it's important that you drop this debuff far away from the raid. Being far from the raid also helps with the hand of frost lines that fire towards the raid from the avalanche zones. If players get hit by these, they're rooted and receive a shitload of chilled touch stacks. The root, however, can be dispelled. For the entire raid to watch out for is the Glacial Ray. This is targeted towards a random player's location, dealing massive damage to anyone hit, and again, applying a shitload of stacks. You'll want to watch out for this at all times, because getting caught can easily cause you to either die or just be ice blocked. The rate also leaves behind a patch that applies chilled touch stacks. Also to watch out for is the ice fall. The boss will mark one side of the wall, and not too long afterwards a line of comets will land from the marker, dealing large damage to anyone hit. These also leave behind patches again that will apply stacks. Almost always, the Icefall will go directly across the middle of the room, blocking you from moving to the other side. We have a single player watch out for them and call for the raid to either move towards the next barrel or just to stay put. Typically, you always want to move towards the next barrel each time it comes in, as you do not want to be blocked off from it. Last to mention in this phase is the Siege Breaker Blast. This is a debuff applied to a single player. It deals light ticking damage and massive raid-wide falloff damage when it expires. The player just needs to move far away from the raid as possible just to keep the damage safe. Players will be knocked back if you're too close, so you'll know when you haven't moved far enough away. Once you've managed all of that and got Jaina to 30% health, the next transition will begin with her teleporting into the middle of the room and resetting all of your chilling touch stacks. She will now begin to cast Flash Freeze. This creates a circle around her that begins to grow until it covers the entire room. Anyone caught will be instantly put into an ice block, and if this cast ever finishes, the people that are in ice blocks will be instantly killed. Now you need to fight your way away from Jaina by killing the ice wall near the last barrel. Now this wall has a large amount of health and will require you to use DPS cooldowns on it before the flash freeze hits you. Once on the other side you have a narrow corridor with Nathanos in an ice block and a tide elemental. Once Nathanos is freed from his ice block, the flash freeze cast on Jaina is interrupted and you'll begin to cast Arcane Barrage which creates a bunch of targeting zones under players feet. If you are hit, you'll take a burst of damage and be knocked back so you do need to avoid them. Now that the flash freeze is over, you'll also begin to gain chilled touch stacks again. As for the elemental, you want to move him slowly towards Jaina, making sure that you interrupt his water bolt volley on heroic, as otherwise it will do raid-wide damage. Any players that are targeted with Heart of Frost want to move away from others, as this debuff causes them to splash damage onto anyone nearby. The elemental can also cast Frost Nova, however, for some reason, it only casts it on normal mode. This will just make it so it roots anyone nearby, which sucks, so you need to make sure that you move away from this ad just before it reaches 100 energy. Once the elemental is dead, interrupt the arcane barrage on Jaina, and the last phase begins. So this phase is similar to phase 2 in many ways, however there is one big difference. There is absolutely no heat sources whatsoever, and the phase isn't particularly short. This doesn't matter too much on normal mode as long as your damage is high. Of course the tanks will be frozen every now and then, but as long as you free them out quickly, you can in theory kill the boss before everyone gets frozen. However on heroic, at this point in the tier, that's not going to happen. At some point everyone is going to get frozen by getting too many chilled touch stacks. An added problem is that when a player is frozen, the boss will spawn a shattering lance next to her, which will shoot towards the frozen player around 7 seconds later. This deals a small amount of damage to anyone in its path, but it does triple damage to the frozen player. It won't kill them if they're topped up, but if they are hit by multiple ones from multiple players being frozen nearby, and they're not freed in time, then the potential for one-shots is pretty high. 
The only issue with no other heat sources is that if the entire raid all play out the phase and dodge mechanics perfectly, you'll all be frozen at the exact same time, meaning that no one will be able to free you, and you're just going to die to a shattering lance or just slowly die to other abilities. So you need to force people to deliberately gain additional stacks so you're not all frozen at the exact same time. There's essentially two different ways of approaching this problem. One, you can execute a strategy where you're banking on people being frozen more than once throughout the phase, which involves setting up at least three teams of people all deliberately getting stacks at different times so that they're frozen at different times. They can just stack before they're frozen and DPS can just cleave and AOE them free within seven seconds so they're not hit by any shattering lances. This is a fairly difficult strategy to pull off as it does require a shitloads of preparation and can easily go wrong if a single person messes up. This is something we think Mythic is going to require, which leaves us with the second strategy. Kill the boss with each member of the raid, ideally only being frozen once. This requires you to set up a special group of AoE players. The idea is that the majority of a raid is deliberately frozen simultaneously and the AoE group will clear them before any of the lances hit. You want to fill this group with demon hunters, rep paladins, shadow priests, essentially classes with insane on-demand burst AoE. To make this group even stronger, you can fill it with classes that can free themselves from ice blocks. Mages can blink, not shimmer, and ice block out of them, paladins can bubble, and DKs can icebound fortitude. We also add a resto shaman to this group of players, simply for the healing and link whilst the rest of the raid is sat in a tomb. When the first group is cleared, the boss should die before 20 stacks are applied again. As for the AoE group, they just simply move into melee before they're blocked and are quickly freed by the rest of the raid, or of course they can cheese their way out of it if they can. So let's show you how this plays out. Shortly into the phase on Heroic, an Orb of Frost will be cast. This creates a large orb that fires off to a random location in the room. Once it reaches its location, it applies a massive amount of chill touch stacks to everyone in the room. However, you can stand within the orb to reduce its power, until it eventually despawns. However, doing so does give the soaking players stacks. So for the first orb, have the special group of AoE and cheese players ignore it whilst everyone else in the raid soaks it. Now, not too long after that, you will have a prismatic image spawn. These spawn randomly throughout the room and duplicate some of the boss's spells. If all DPS in the raid swap to them immediately, you should be able to kill them before they cause any significant issues. Now, once that first one is dead, the boss will cast her first glacial ray. The entire raid must avoid it, but be ready to stack. The moment the ray has finished, the group of players that soak the orb of frost then stand within the patch of frost that the ray has left behind. Meanwhile, the special group of AoE players stands nearby. The moment the players are frozen, we bloodlust and nuke the living shit out of all of the ice blocks. Now, Bloodlust has an interesting interaction with Jaina, forcing her to enter an ice block for 20 seconds, completely stopping her from casting any of her spells aside from any lances during that time, meaning that you only need to focus on killing the player's ice blocks and dodging the shattering lances that are left behind. The moment that has been executed, you can then continue the phase as normal. The special group will just then need to move into melee whenever they're about to reach 20 stacks themselves or cheese their way out of it. The Frost Orb for the rest of the fight should just be soaked by anyone who has particularly low stacks. This is chances are this will be that AoE group because they got frozen later. Now you still have broadside debuffs in play, just place them away from other players as well as the Siege Breaker Blast. Again, just do what you did in Phase 2 and just place them very far away from the raid. You also have the Icefall, just make sure you move away from it. And again, whenever a Prismatic Image does spawn, all DPS including melee really should swap to it and kill it off immediately. Now tanks will still be frozen often with the ice shards, deal with it in the same way you did in phase 2, but make sure that you're always facing Jaina away from the raid as a tank, because you'll cast a new ability called Crystalline Dust, which is just a massive frontal cone. This is unavoidable, so make sure you're the only one who takes the hit. Just do all that and do enough damage, you should be able to kill the boss before everyone is tombed for a second time. Now there's something we should mention before someone else does in the comments, if you are tombed in an ice block for a second time, you can use living action potions, they are a last resort. We're guessing this is a massive oversight on Blizzard's end and it isn't intended, but whilst it is working, it's essentially something that you can use to give you a shit ton more time. So you can always use those if you need to. Additionally, you can get Jaina to ice block for a second time. If you have somebody who died before the lust and is rezzed afterwards, if you then lust for that player, Jaina will ice block again, giving you an extra 20 seconds to get the fight back under control. But that's all it is for this fight. Good luck. If you'd like to refresh your minds on everything we've talked about in this video, or would like to see better detailed tooltips, then go check out our guide for this fight over on Wowhead. The link for that is in the description. If this guide helped you out at all, then please do throw us a like. It helps us out a lot. And we will catch you all next week in the Mythic Guides. Thanks for watching. Take care.